2023, the year of our Lord. It's been a wild year so far. The Silicon Valley bank collapsed, China sent multiple balloons to spy on America, Charles III was crowned king, Canada is on fire, a submarine held together by Lego bricks imploded, and most importantly of all, I bought a PlayStation 5. With the help of many generous donations, we raised $250. With that, half of the PS5 purchase was made possible, and then a kind and sadistic gentleman said they would donate the other $250 on one condition. I needed to enter into a blood pact. Beat Bloodborne on BL4. I have never played Bloodborne before, but being a Souls player, I was looking forward to trying out the game. The only issue, I'm a PvP player, not a challenge runner. And after chat, peer pressured me into accepting this offer, it was on. Bloodborne is not like any other Souls game. In a traditional Souls game, you can create monstrous builds with a wide variety of weapons to choose from, and you can make your life even easier by playing a caster and firing nukes across the map with a high damage spell or miracle. Not in Bloodborne. You have 26 weapons to choose from, which may seem like a lot, but when you compare that to Elden Ring's 308, you start to realize your options are quite limited. With the saw cleaver at your side and a crappy pistol at the other, we set out on this quest of pure anguish. This is the story of the blind BL4 first playthrough of Bloodborne. Like any other Souls game with the exception of Dark Souls 2, you can simply run past all of the enemies instead of wasting a death on trying to fight a random region enemy. Yes, I know that makes me a soft-handed baby bottle boy, but shut up. Our first boss we encountered was the Cleric Beast, and this boss was more aggressive than I'm used to in a Souls game, to put it lightly. It throws out constant hitboxes and puts the player in a relatively small arena, made for the ouch time level of this boss to be much higher than most Souls bosses. I needed to adopt a strategy in order to defeat this run and these bosses. So, I adopted three processes to defeat Bloodborne. Number one, learning phase. Circle the monstrosity and let it throw up moves until I was confidently able to say, I think I know what this thing does. Number two, punishes. Understand what attacks are punishable and which attacks are too risky to risk a punish. Once mastering the first two, you get number three. And most important of all, bashing your head against the wall until you break through. The keys to victory in the Cleric Beast fight is listen to audio cues. When it yells, it's doing an attack. When it goes into its combo, wait for the leap and punish. Don't stay too close to it to avoid its down slam. Molotovs are nice, except when you throw them through the fucking boss. Fuck that. 63 attempts. Gas coin. Gas coin is a pretty sick first boss, I would say, when it comes to the Souls series. The main thing that I can say about Gascoin is he is a parry simulator. He basically teaches the player that you have a gun and you should use it. He has many heavy attacks that are ripe for a parry with the pistol. Lean into those and it's really not that difficult of a boss. 23 attempts. Furry Mom. <coughs> Vicar Amelia. She's slow, but has some rather wide hitboxes and hits like a truck. Dodge in and to the right, crush her limbs when she jumps back, reset to the middle, and as well, rinse and repeat. 59 attempts. Shadows of Yarnum. These guys suck. Now as an Elden Ring PvP player, it's not my first rodeo when it comes to a good 3v1. But 3v1s where everyone is running bull goats, dual naginatas with an extendo option, that's uh, not easy. One wrong move and it's immediate death. One dude is a katana spammer, one guy breathes fire on you, and the third guy has laser targeted nukes. He is firing at you constantly. These guys have two phases, asshole and Orochimaru asshole. Snake phase is triggered when one guy goes below 25% health. The best way to play this is get them all to 50% health and then nuke them. Ideally, you want to nuke the Katana Spambro first and then the Pyro Mage. Then, Candle Guy. If you can get down to just the Candle Guy, it's a free win. R1 constantly and he is infinitely stun locked. Oh, and they summon a giant Snake Hydra that can only be blocked by the giant Tombstone or by rolling. It's RNG and it's shit. Dodge it once and your ticket to victory is accepted at the pearly gates of heaven. 90 attempts. Rom. 
The giant spider is considered to be the speedrun killer, a menace. One of the most memorable boss fights in all of Vanilla Bloodborne. Especially on a BL4, these spiders can one-shot you. There's so many of them. This is truly a fight of patience and speed. Six attempts. Why do people say this boss is hard? You slowly pick off the spiders and beat the shit out of the fat turd. Phase two is exactly the same thing, except he now has three new attacks that are all slow as shit and can be easily dodged. What am I missing? I do not get it. Rom is easy. What, what, I don't know. What, whatever, fuck it. The One Reborn. This Fallout Centaur is considered such an easy boss. Or at least according to my chat, which the vast majority of them have not attempted a BL4 run. It rains shit on you from the mage on its back. It throws explosions on its feet if you try to come close to it. Plus, it gives you a nice lesson in tap dancing if you approach it in the wrong way. All of this one-shots you. Keys to victory. I don't really know. Just learn the moves and go on Gabunga. When I got my win, it just kind of came out of nowhere, so... I know that's giga helpful, but there you go. Uh, 59 attempts. <laughs> Murgo's Wet Nurse. This thing is easy, but has a phase that is annoying as shit and can slay you with one wrong step. Wait until it does a slow move and roll into the back. Once you're at the back, get in there and start going to town. There is one spin move this thing does that is designed to catch panic rules, which I am famously bad at. During the dark phase, just run in a circle and don't stop running. 63 attempts. You could technically beat the game here, but my chat convinced me that I needed to do the true ending, so after consuming three yummy umbilical cords, I set off to fight easily the two hardest bosses in the game. Garmin the First Hunter, and the Moon Presence. We start this final push with Garmin. Garmin is my favorite fight in the entire base game. He is fast, he has multiple combos, and two interchangeable phases between a gun and a short sword, and a scythe. The scythe move set teaches you dodging and has a heavy attack that can be punished with a pistol parry. Wait for this parry and go in for a dash L1, L1 combo. This boss really requires you to stay on your feet. He has a grab that comes out lightning quick that leads to death, a leap move that punishes a back roll. Learn the roll patterns and play slightly patient to know when he is doing one or the other. What gave me the most issues was his phase two, the gun phase. He zips to you with his gun, which will punish far spacing. Ironically, the short sword phase is Best punished by simply keeping close to him. He has two stances, aggressive and passive. If he has his legs slightly crouched, he is ready to attack. Just stay safe and be ready for two attacks in particular. The first being his combo that tracks onto you and ends with the gunshot. This is hard to punish move, so I would suggest you just going full defensive here and letting the flurry complete. The second move is a roll in gunshot. This can be punished by a dodge into him in L1. Play phase two carefully and pray he doesn't slaughter you so he can go into phase three. He has two transitions that moves him into phase three that can be greatly punished. Go ham on these, but be ready for an explosion at the end of the second transition. In phase three, he gets unlimited hyper armor, so be careful because he cannot be staggered at this point. If you play the first phase correctly, this really doesn't change much for the fight. Don't be greedy, restrict yourself to one dash L1. He will do this move on the scythe where he goes into the sky and does a wind strike at the ground. Run under him and do two dodges. I don't know if this is optimal, but it worked for me, so I don't know. do it. He can switch between gun and scythe in this phase. Scythe is easy to punish, but the gun is not. Just be ready for the roll shot move and punish that alone on gun and do your optimal punishes on the scythe. Do this together and boom, you have a victory. 112 attempts. Man, this guy is tough. Last but not least, we have Moon Presence. This thing is a weird contrast to Garmin, where Garmin, you have to be quick and hypervigilant. Moon Presence requires you to be patient. This thing is a hitbox simulator and can catch you very, very quickly. Weirdly enough, despite your most dangerous spot is being in front of it, this spot is also the safest spot you can be for it. Bait out a flurry of the four hit combos and roll dodge the fourth. Punish the back of it once or twice if you're feeling spicy, and when it does its flip backwards, roll dodge backwards. Rinse, repeat. 
At 75% health, it will start to do this move that drops your health to 1. This move is easily punished and you can rally your health back to full. This is also a giga punish opportunity. She also creates these bubbles that explode and rain blood. Just don't go near that, and as long as you play it the same way uh, as you did in phase one, there you go. Boom, victory. 70 tries though. And there you have it. Base game BL4 first playthrough completed. This isn't a massive achievement in the grand scheme of challenge running, but damn it, I was so proud of myself after accomplishing this for my first run. This was a journey that I never thought I would love so much. Something about the rush of beating these bosses brought me back to what makes the Souls game so incredible. The challenge of these games is what brings me back, and what made the first playthrough of Elden Ring so incredible for me. But anyways, I digress. The question now becomes... DLC bosses? I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Some of you may know that I am primarily a streamer over at Twitch. If you saw today's video and you've never seen my Twitch, go over there, drop a follow, and use the secret password Mikolash. If you say Mikolash as your first comment coming over to the stream here from YouTube, I will VIP you for the day. And we and I'll be like, dang, that, that person's cool. They, they came from YouTube. All right, bye. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.